I'm Dr. Fakir Avali and this is Urinary Tract Infections in Adults. The basics are so important. Urinary tract infection is the most common bacterial infection in the ambulatory care setting in the United States. Nearly half of females will develop a UTI in their lifetime, with 25% recurrence within 6 months. And over half of all recurrent UTIs are caused by the same initial bacterial strain that caused the first infection. Pyelonephritis is much less common than cystitis, even in patients with untreated cystitis or untreated asymptomatic bacteriuria. Risk factors for UTIs include sexual intercourse, use of spermicides, previous UTI, a new sex partner, and a history of UTI in a first degree female because there, there are some genetic components into it. Now let's take a look at the anatomy of the urinary tract. So on the left you're looking at the urinary anatomy of the females and on the right you're looking at the urinary anatomy of the males. Note that urethra is what's connected to the bladder so the urine will actually exit the bl bladder through urethra in both uh, females and male. So there's urethra that goes through the penis and is connected to the bladder. And the ureters, the ureters connects the bladder to the kidneys in both uh, female and males. Now in females specifically, the urethra is very close to the rectum. It's very easy for bacterial translocation from the GI. So the GI, so gastrointestinal organisms, can easily translocate to the urethra and then go up to the bladder. So cystitis is much more common in females compared to males. In males, you can see that the opening of the urethra is much further from, uh, from the rectum. So it's much more difficult for translocation of bacteria from, uh, from the rectum all the way to the urethra. Also look at the anatomy. So it's much more difficult for bacteria to travel up the urethra in the males so therefore uh, urinary tract infections are more common in females compared to male another thing to note is that uh, in females when females get urinary tract infections uh, the bacteria can oftentimes colonize the vagina and in males if males get UTIs the bacteria can also colonize the prostate so the prostate is also uh, involved oftentimes when a man gets a urinary tract infection. And in men, the bacteria can also uh, cause infection of the urethra, so urethritis is uh, possible, as well as epididymitis. So epididymis is this area that's connected through the prostate to, to the same uh, pathway. In general, urinary tract infections are divided into two categories. The upper urinary tract infections, which is primarily pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis is the infection of the kidneys. And the lower urinary tract infection, which includes cystitis, epididymitis, prostatitis, uh, urethritis. So the bottom three are specifically in men. And cystitis can happen in men and uh, women. Let's take a look at the pathogenesis of urinary tract infection. So as I explained on the previous slide, is that bacteria can oftentimes translocate from the gut, specifically from the rectum, and go through the urethra. And then once they go through the urethra, they can colonize the urine in the bladder. This can cause inflammation and an immune response, specifically neutrophils, which can cause epithelial damage leading to the burning sensation in the bladder. Now for most people, this would be the end and the infection will be resolved. However, for some people, the bacteria can ascend even further. So through the ureters, the bacteria can actually ascend all the way up to the kidneys and they can actually colonize the kidney tissue, resulting in inflammation and damage to the kidney. There are a lot of vasculature in the nephrons, so the bacteria can easily get into the blood. And that could lead to bacteremia or infection in the blood. In general, there are three ways to get urinary tract infection. The first way to get urinary tract infection is through the ascending pathway, which I just described with the bacteria uh, translocating from the gut to the urethra and ascending to the uh, bladder and then to the kidneys and eventually to the blood. Another way is if the bacteria actually come from the blood. So if somebody has bloodstream infection, because the blood goes through the kidneys, the bacteria can actually go from the blood to the kidneys and then from the kidneys to the bladder causing cystitis. 
And the third way of getting urinary tract infection is actually through the lymphatic system. The lymphatic uh, pathway is not as common. In fact, the evidence for it is actually from animal study. Now let's take a look at reliable resources. IDSA is the Infectious Diseases Society of America. It's the organization in the United States that develops clinical practice guidelines for infectious diseases. The first guideline that you should be aware of is the 2009 IDSA guidelines for catheter associated urinary tract infections in adults. This is the guideline that clinicians typically refer to for complicated UTIs. The second guideline is the 2010 IDSA guidelines for acute uncomplicated cystitis and pyelonephritis in women. The third one is the 2016 IDSA guidelines for candidiasis. This guideline includes recommendations for candiduria, which is the urinary infection caused by candida, which are fungal infections. You will learn about fungal infections on a different topic. And the last one is the 2019 IDSA guidelines for asymptomatic bacteriuria that were released just a few months ago. The first learning objective is identify signs and symptoms of cystitis and pyelonephritis. Let's take a look at some key definitions. When you get a urine sample from a patient, for most individuals there will be no bacteria in the urine. The urine is supposed to be sterile, especially in men. And we call this sterile urine. Now if you find bacteria in the urine sample, this could be due to contamination of the sample. This could be from the skin of the patient or from the environment. Once you rule out contamination, if there are bacteria in the urine, we call this bacteriuria. This means the presence of bacteria in the urine. If a patient with bacteriuria has no symptoms, we call this asymptomatic bacteriuria. This is not a urinary infection and does not need to be treated in most patients. If the patient does have symptoms, However, we call this symptomatic bacteriuria, or more commonly known as urinary tract infections. What exactly are these symptoms? The four most common symptoms are frequency, so the patient has to urinate small amounts frequently, and it will be painful, which we call dysuria. There will also be urgency, or the urge to void immediately, and there can also be hematuria, or the presence of blood in the urine. As I mentioned earlier, there are different types of UTIs. The most common one is cystitis or the infection of the bladder. There is also pyelonephritis, which is not as common, but is very important. Symptoms that are more specific to pyelonephritis include fever, which is not always present, but if it is, it is suggestive of pyelonephritis. There will also be CVA tenderness or flank pain. CVA tenderness is detected during physical exam, typically by a physician, as they tap on the back of the kidneys with their fingers. UTIs can also be considered uncomplicated or complicated. For example, there's uncomplicated cystitis or there is complicated cystitis. Let's take a closer look. So uncomplicated U UTI refers to infection in a structurally and neurologically normal urinary tract. And this is important because if you have a normal urinary tract, both structure, uh, you know, anatomically and neurologically, that means you have normal flow of the urine, which uh, you know typically clears uh, the tract. So there's no, you know, even if there are occasionally bacteria, uh, the urine flow will actually wash them out. We also have. Uh, you know, we don't have guidelines for complicated UTI, but here's the generally accepted definition for it. It's basically UTI, uh, a UTI in the presence of factors that uh, predispose uh, patients to persistent or relapsing infection. So these include if, you know, the patient has foreign bodies, uh, most important one is indwelling, uh, indwelling catheters. Also, if the patient has obstructions, um, immunosuppression, renal failure, renal transplant, uh, plantation and urinary retention from neurologic disease. These are, uh, you know, risk factors that basically disrupt the normal flow of the urine, which is supposed to clear the bacteria out and maintain a sterile urine. In addition, um, you know, infection in men, pregnant women, and children are also considered uh, by most experts uh, complicated UTI. And the reason we uh, 
try to distinguish complicated UTI is because that these infections typically are due to, are, are, or I should say, they are more likely to be due to resistant uh, organisms. So having that in mind, it helps selecting anti antimicrobials when treating uh, complicated UTIs.